like to tell you about today is a story by which we take charged neutral atoms, atoms that, unlike ions, would move straight in the presence of a magnetic field and do nothing in the presence of an electric field, and make them behave as if they have a charge, both an effective charge, a synthetic magnetic field, and in a story you won't hear today, a synthetic electric field. So we take these charged neutral atoms and make them act somewhat like electrons, somewhat like but somewhat different as well. The atoms we have are called bosons. That means they have a propensity to occupy the same quantum state. Or as electrons, as you might have learned in chemistry class, no two electrons have exactly the same quantum state. So it's somewhat similar to electrons, but somewhat different in the same way. So we've, taken, we've developed a technique by which we can engineer the Hamiltonian of these atoms, that's what physicists use to describe how they behave, in such a way that they act just as charged particles do in a magnetic field. Now it's not a real magnetic field, if I was to put an electron there, the electron would have no idea that this magnetic field is here. It's a way we've engineered the behavior of these atoms to act as if there is a magnetic field. And now you hear the story of how that happens. We prepare a beam of rubidium-87 atoms and make it travel through DC and slower from right to left. Here the atoms are gradually stopped by a combination of magnetic fields and laser beams. After going through the slower, the atoms are collected in a magneto-optical trap in a vacuum chamber. So after the, the atomic beam is slowed down from the, from the tube, they are captured at the center of the chamber um, in the intersection of six laser beams and uh, a magnetic trap. So the atoms are, are both cooled and uh, confined at the center um, with a combination of the, the forces from the, from the lasers and the magnetic field. After the pre-cooling from the laser beams, we turn them off and then leave only the magnetic trap on. So we do the further cooling by um, reducing the, the depth of the trap such that the hard atoms can leave and the remaining atoms can resimilize and get cooled down. So we do this cooling process first only in a magnetic trap and then we transfer it into an optical trap. We repeat the cooling until all the atoms are so cold that all of them go to the lowest energy ground state. That is called Bose-Einstein condensate. So after we get co-atoms in a, in a Bose-Einstein condensate, we then uh, shine two laser beams which are at about 90 degree angle um, and uh, intersect at the center of the atoms. When we tune the frequency difference between these two lasers correctly, they will be resonant with the atoms and uh, modify the property of, of the atoms. With other suitable um, experimental parameters, um, we can generate a synthetic magnetic field on the atoms from these two laser beams. And uh, in such field, there will be vortices um, entering the condensate. So uh, what you've heard now is a story of, from uh, first the PhD student, uh, Karina Jimenez Garcia, and then the first author, uh, Yuzhu Lin, about how we can take a device like this, which really makes a new kind of material, a material of ultra-cold atoms that has totally new properties. In this case, what we call bosons, things that can both condense. And now we've put a fictitious charge on them, and now a synthetic magnetic field. And this is a totally new kind of thing, a kind of thing of bosons in a magnetic field. You may have heard of the quantum Hall effect. This is something NIST uses as a standard of resistance. These things in the quantum Hall effect usually, usually are electrons. But now we have this new material, a material of bosons that are different. And the same kind of large magnetic fields where you have the quantum Hall effect. Here we have entirely new physics. Physics that might be useful, for example, for a thing called a topological quantum computer, or things we haven't even heard of before. I'd now like to show you a simulation of our experiment illustrating the slow evolution of our system as a synthetic magnetic field is turned on. Our system is small, only about one-tenth the size of a single strand of human hair, and nonetheless is composed of about 200,000 atoms and at a temperature of only a hundred billionths of a degree above absolute zero. At these astoundingly low temperatures, the atoms are moving only a couple of millimeters per second as compared to the hundreds of meters per second that the atoms move at room temperatures. In this simulation, the synthetic magnetic field first slowly turns on and then holds constant. Once holding constant, you begin to see vortices circulating about the edge of the system, and then at the top right, the first vortex enters. Once the vortices enter the system, they begin to swirl and dance in a complicated pattern, with their motion gradually slowing towards the end of the simulation. After very long times, so they begin to form a slightly ordered pattern that becomes increasingly ordered as time goes on.